All right, everybody, welcome to Hebrew Readers Church. I'm your brother, Zach Wah, and I have my brother, Kasifo, with me here today. This is the Day of Atonement. For all you guys that are familiar with the Day of Atonement, and for all you that aren't familiar with the Day of Atonement today, where you fast with no food or drink, and you, you pretty much reflect. You repent, you reflect, and you, it's a day to look within yourself and to see the things that need working on and the things that you can do better. So it's a day of building, internal building. So it's a great day. It's a great day to slow down, slow down your life. It's a great day to actually zone in so that you can be perfected in Meshiach A great day to, to grow, to really take the time and stop everything around you so that you can focus. And for that, we're grateful. Today, we're going to be going into some things that are going to be a little hard to swallow. Um, usually when dealing with the inner man, things are harder to swallow than dealing with things outside of you. So um, just bear with us today. We, we truly love and, and want to help everybody grow. So just hear, hear the matter out. In, in all regards, okay? All right, we're gonna start with actions versus intentions, all right? We're way by our actions, not our intentions. I know a lot of us, we like to say, well, my intentions were good or my intentions are good. But if your actions don't coincide with the intent, then something happened in the midst of what you were trying to do. And you have to understand that. First Samuel chapter two, verse three. Let's see how Elohim actually weighs our intentions versus our actions. Talk no more so exceedingly proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. For higher is the Alahayim of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. Alahayim weighs you by your actions, not by your intentions. So if Alahayim weighs us by our actions, that means that we actually have to follow through with our intentions if they're good. It's not just having the intent alone. Because the word intent, right? Let's let's look at the word intent. Um, it's going to be H four two zero nine, and you can find it in Jeremiah chapter thirty, verse twenty four, right? Jeremiah thirty and twenty four. I'll read the verse, and then I'll I'll give the the definition of intent. The fierce anger of Ahiah shall not return until he have done it. And until he had performed the intents of his heart in the latter days, he shall consider it, right? So we see that it's referring to the intents of the heart, right? The word intent is H4209, right? The definition is a plan, right? So you plan something in your mind, that's your intention, right? You plan it in your mind. Usually evil. So usually when somebody plans something in their mind, it's usually going to turn out evil because they're not being led by the spirit. They're being led by themselves. It's also good to have good intentions, which it says sometimes good, right? Because sometimes you can actually do good yourself without being led by the spirit to do well, right? But it's usually evil. Because if you're devising an intention or, or plan in your mind, you're going according to your own understanding. You're going according to your own spirit. Now, yes, some of us that are further, further along in the faith, yes, we can plan something because we've already been purging our heart. We've already been purging our thoughts. So we can do something good with a plan or an intent of our own selves. But a lot of us are warring in the mind. 
And it's hard for us to see the things that are good and the things that are bad. Because a lot of times our, our own personal interests, our own desires are steering our intentions. So about time we go and do the action of our intent, it becomes evil. Because we were never truly planning on Yate in the first place to go and walk ourselves. We need Yate to walk with us, especially coming into the faith or coming into the perfecting of the saints. You need Yate to guide you because you need a new mindset. You need a new, you need new guidance. It says a plan, usually evil, sometimes good, a device, discretion, because it takes discretion to have intent. And a lot of us are struggling with the discretion because of the, the war within us. Intent, witty invention, lewdness, mischievous device, thought. So you can see how these entities come into your heart or come into your mind when you're trying to devise these intents. But then by the time you go to perform the intent, you're bombarded by the evil spirits and they negate or they steer your actions away from the original intent because it wasn't founded properly, right? The mind, the mind is an amazing thing. Overcoming the mind is an amazing thing. And we underrate it a lot, but this whole war, everything that we go through spiritually starts in the mind. And then it goes off into your actions. Because once you can be convinced in your mind that whatever it is is true, you're going to operate in it whether it be good or whether it be bad. Hey, Casa, do you have the verses in, um, in Hermes? Yes, uh, I do. Yeah, can you go ahead and read those for me, please? Right. This is from the Shepherd of Hermes, Mandate 5, Chapter 2, Verse 4. For angry temper is in the first place foolish, fickle, and senseless. Then from foolishness is engendered bitterness, and from bitterness, wrath, and from wrath, anger, and from anger, spite. Then spite being composed of all these evil elements become a great sin and incurable. For when all these spirits dwell in one vessel, where the Holy Spirit also dwelleth, that vessel cannot contain them, but overfloweth. The delicate spirit, therefore, as not being accustomed to dwell with an evil spirit, nor with harshness, departeth from a man of that kind and seeketh to dwell with gentleness and tranquility. Then, when it hath removed from that man in whom it dwells, that man becometh emptied of the righteous spirit. And henceforward, being filled with the evil spirits, he is unstable in all his actions, being dragged about hither and thither by the evil spirits, and is altogether blinded and bereft of his good intent. Thus, then, it happeneth to all persons of angry temper. All right. So if you don't come in the right spirit, I'm going to kind of brief synopsis what Kasafo is reading. If you don't come in the right spirit, the wrong spirit is going to overtake. So if you don't come in the right spirit in the first place, when you're devising your plan or your, or your intentions, the spirit that has the most influence is going to overtake or dominate it. So you can see how a lot of times, and I'm sure that you guys can relate, when you want to do something good or whatever the case is, and you have these good thoughts and you're like, you know, I'm gonna go and do this and then it backfires and it doesn't turn out well, it's because one of those other evil spirits have more influence of your intentions than the Holy Spirit. So this is what Hermes and Brother Kosovo is reading and what Hermes is explaining. Persistence without insight will lead to the same outcome. 
if you're continually trying to overcome something or do something and you don't understand it, you're going to continue doing, you're going to continue getting the same results over and over. So if you're continually trying to have good intentions or to complete an intention in a good way where it's completely good and you don't understand what's fighting against you, then you're going to get the same outcome over and over and over. If you don't understand what's going on with inside of you, you're going to get the same outcome over and over and over. It's never going to change. I'm going to say it again. Persistence, persistence without insight is going to lead to the same outcome. We have to understand what's going on within us. We have to understand what's warring against us. We have to understand what spirits are attacking us so that we can have insight. We can go and find the insight. This is where we, we have teachers, we have Alahayan, we have his records. We have all the examples for us so that we can gain the insight of what's keeping us back, of what's tripping us up in our walk, what's tripping us up from doing good and allowing it to be sincerely and purely good in our conscience and in our deeds. You have to examine yourself. Once you realize that there's nothing good coming from the things that you're doing wrong, once you understand the things you're doing wrong and that there's nothing good coming from them because this is a day of atonement. This is a day for us to self-examine and say, hey, the things that I'm doing wrong, what, what fruit am I bringing from them? What's the result after I do it? How does it affect people? How does it affect me? And this is where it comes to speaking truth in your heart. And before you even get to that, you have to recognize what you're doing wrong and accepting them. If you're doing something wrong and you're not accepting it, then nothing can change. Take the time and weigh the actions and thoughts to see if fruit is coming from them. And you're not just doing this for yourself, but you're also doing it for others. Because we are the body of Christ. We are all one body. So if you're making these changes, they're going to affect everybody. The way that you deal and the way that you go about things, the way that you carry yourself, the way that you respond, the way that you, the way that you speak, your deeds they affect you and they also affect everyone around you and they build your relationships even if someone isn't treating you right the way that you operate toward them sets an example We have to set examples. We have to be people that are going to set examples for the world to see. No matter what's going on in the world, no matter how people are treating you, no matter what spirits are overtaking people or, or leading people or guiding people, we're supposed to be locking in and tapping into the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit is in a man, and all these other spirits are in that vessel as well, the Holy Spirit departed. So if you're going to operate and you, and you examine yourself and you see that you have all these spirits that you're dealing with, the Holy Spirit is being, is being pushed out because you, you're, you have too many spirits within you 
and there's no place for her. The Holy Spirit is a delicate spirit. She doesn't want to be bombarded with evil. And we're supposed to be delicate spirits. If we're operating with the Holy Spirit in us, we're supposed to be delicate. If we're harsh and rash and hasty and mean and snappy, that's not delicate. If we're holding grudges, if we're angry, if we can't speak peaceably, if we can't listen, and operate in love, trying to understand where somebody is coming from and being patient. What spirit are we operating in? What spirit is guiding us? What spirit is leading us? These are the things that we should be examining today. These are the things that are important when it comes to our salvation. These are the things that are important when it comes to us getting closer to Allah. You got something, Kasa, before I go? Scripturally, with everything you've discussed thus far, how these spirits are hindering us from the Holy Spirit because wisdom of Solomon chapter one, verse four and five, it says for into a malicious soul, wisdom shall not enter, nor dwell in the body that is subject to sin. And Harmer supported it by showing how when those evil spirits come in, that delicate spirit departs. Verse five of wisdom of Solomon says, for the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit and remove from thoughts that are without understanding and will not abide when unrighteousness cometh in. And this is interesting where you spoke on how if we keep doing the same thing without understanding, we won't see change. All right. And it's, it's evident because the Holy Spirit isn't with thoughts that are without understanding. So al along with what you're talking about, Instead of making plans, walking according to our own mind, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 26 and 27 guides us a better mode of action in our mind. It says to ponder the path of thy feet and let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. So from the precepts for our guidance, it's better for us to think about what we're doing. Think about all our actions before taking a step forward in it and make sure that the way we're going is established in righteousness. To make sure it's not something taking us off to the right hand or to the left, but it's keeping us on a straight path to remove our foot from evil. And we have to spend time in the word. We have to read, study to understand, to get the guidance because Psalms Verse 19 and 12 says, who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. And the way to understand these secret faults is expressed in verse 9 and 11, where he says, the fear of Ahaya is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of Ahaya are true and righteous altogether. He says in verse 11, moreover, by them is thy servant warned. And in keeping of them, there is great reward. So by those judgments, we can know when our, our ways are actually established in truth. So. Amen. Amen. You mentioned not being bitter, not being grudgeful, not being mean. All these by precept are things that grieve the Holy Spirit. Right. In, 
Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. It says, well, verse 29, 31, and 32 explains the things that grieve the Holy Spirit. Verse 29, it says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Can we get the definition of corrupt? Yes. So that everybody can understand the concept of what you're saying. The definition of corrupt is G45. It means rotten. That is worthless, bad communication. A poor quality, bad, unfit for use. So poor communication can go into anything. I mean, it can go into speaking in anger, speaking in spite, you know, speaking in any spirit that is not of peace, joy, you know, long suffering, patience, goodness. He expounds on our types of communications and in Ephesians 5 and 4, where he says, neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting, which are not convenient. And the word filthiness is G151, and it means shamefulness, that is obscenity. So obscene language as well ties into that poor communication that grieves the spirit. So you have let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Then verse 31, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as Allah am for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. And all this was explaining how not to grieve the Holy Spirit, because that's what he was talking about in Ephesians 4 and 30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of Allah, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Also in Hermas Mandate 5, spoke on the spirit that we should walk in, in order that the Holy Spirit might be happy to dwell with us. This is chapter 2, verse 3 of Mandate 5 of Shepherd of Hermas. But long-suffering is great and strong and has a mighty and vigorous power and is prosperous in great enlargement, gladsome, exultant, free from care, glorifying the Lord at every season, having no bitterness in itself, remaining always gentle and tranquil. This long-suffering, therefore, dwelleth with those whose faith is perfect. And that's it. You, you can see the fruit of the results of the fruit that come from operating in the Holy Spirit. Because if you're operating in the Holy Spirit, she's going to bring forth her fruit and you're going to know it. If you're operating in another spirit, they're going to bring forth their fruit and you're going to know it. That's how you can weigh your actions. That's how you can weigh the intent of your mind. If, if bad comes from what you did, then you know that there was an evil spirit involved. If good comes from what you did, then you know that the Holy Spirit was involved. It's very simple. It's very dry, it's very black or white. Okay. Now us as believers, us as believers in Yache. It's more than just looking out for ourselves. It's about looking out for the whole body. Whether it be your wife, your husband, your brother, or your sister, we have to think about what's best for their well-being as well as our own well-being. We have to look out for everyone. We can't put ourselves above everyone else because we're supposed to be loving our brother or our sister as ourself. So if we place ourselves above everyone else, how can we be loving everyone as ourselves? Right? 
We have to think about these things. Examine these things. Say, hey, am I treating everyone equally? Am I treating myself well? How can I learn to treat others well when I can't treat myself well? It's impossible. If you can't do good things and, and think good things for you, about yourself, innately, you're going to think those same evil things about others. You're going to impose your thoughts upon them because of the evil intent, the evil spirit that is in the midst and driving you. You're going to say, okay, you're going to think about it, how you would do it, or the intent of your own heart, or the imaginations of your own mind. And you're going to impose those thoughts on people. You're going to impose the actions. You're going to weigh their actions based off of how you weigh your own. These are the things that need to be examined. Whether whoever needs to hear this message, these are the things that need to be examined. You have to be able to properly weigh your actions. And that's how you grow. You grow by weighing your actions correctly and by the scriptures, by Allah because Allah is the judge, correct? And by him, all actions are weighed, right? As we read in Samuel. We have to look at it as Allah would judge it, not as how we would judge ourselves. This is the big difference in a lot of people's growth is being able to come out of themselves and say, you know what? I'm not going to judge myself according to my own standard. I'm going to judge myself according to the standard of, of Allah. And I'm going to make sure that I coincide with what his standard is in all things. Not just the things that you want to pick and choose. Because then you're still going according to your own understanding and you're lukewarm and you know what happens when you're lukewarm you get spit out we don't want to get spit out that's not the intent here i would pray that anyone watching this video has the intention to do good and well and wants to be received by Allah and wants to dwell with the holy spirit If that is you, then you need to examine yourself and speak truth in your heart. You need to see and learn of Allah so that you can judge yourself according to Allah. If you don't know what Allah standard or his expectations for you are, then how can you achieve them? How can you reach something that you don't know what it is? This is what I'm going back to persistence without insight will lead to the same outcome. Because you don't understand, you don't have any insight. You don't know what you're trying to achieve. You're just doing it, which is persistent. You're persistently doing it, whatever it is that you're doing, but you have no direction. Today is about direction. Today is about understanding the standard. Understanding what Allah expects out of us. And not being a judge ourselves, but being judged. Not being our own Allah but allowing Allah to guide us.
submitting ourselves, humbling ourselves under someone who is greater than us, under someone who knows whose way is known and proven and not thinking that our way is better than his or that we have some understanding that's greater than Elohim. Lifting ourselves up against Elohim. Today is a day of humility. Today is a day of examining, a day of grabbing hold of this thing that we call life, grabbing hold of ourselves and loving ourselves and paying attention. We can pay attention and give ourselves over to anything else outside in the world, but we can't give ourselves to truly examine ourselves and to put in the work to overcome the inner man and to change within. I pray that this message is, is reaching out and really touching you guys to really want to make the change, to know how to make the change, to know what is the change what are the changes that need to be made? Allah Hayam knows what a person needs to get them to change. This is where trust comes in. We may not like it because it's uncomfortable to us. Because the thing, when something changes, it's uncomfortable. When something changes, it's not what you're used to because it's a change. That's what a change is. It gets you out of a usual routine. It changes a routine or a behavior or a pattern. It's uncomfortable. We understand, we all get it. We all understand that change is uncomfortable because we all have to go through change. We may not like it, but if we sit and reflect, it becomes evident that his way is the only way that will make us come out of whatever it is we're doing that's not good. We have to humble ourselves and trust his ways over our own. I'm going to jump over to 2 Samuel 22 and 3. Because even David understood. Matter of fact, I'm going to jump into 2 Samuel 22 and 2. I'm going to start there. And he said, Ahiah is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. The Elohim of my rock and him will I trust. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation. My high tower and my refuge, my savior. Thou savest me from violence. I will call on Ahiah who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. We have to trust him. We have to trust in his process. We have to trust in his deliverance and not take things according to our own mind, our own hand. We have to wait, be patient. When the waves of death come past me, the floods of unholy men made me afraid. The sorrows of hell compassed me about. The snares of death prevented me. In my distress, I called upon Ahia. So when we, we're going through it and things are getting tough for us, we have to go to what we trust in. You have to trust in Elohim. And cried unto my Elohim. And he did hear my voice out of his temple, and my cry did enter into his ears. Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations of heaven moved and shook because he was wroth. So he will come and he will deliver you. There went up a smoke out of his nostrils and fire out of his mouth devoured. 
coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also and came down, and darkness was under his feet. And he rode upon the cherub and did fly. And he was seen upon the wings of the wind. And he made darkness pavilions round about him, dark waters and thick clouds of the skies. Through the brightness before him were coals of fire kindled. A higher thundered from heaven, and the Most High uttered his voice. And he sent out arrows and scattered them, lightning, and discomforted them. And the channels of the sea appeared. The foundations of the world were discovered. And the rebuking of Ahia, at the blast of the breath of his nostrils, he sent from above. He took me. He drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them that hated me, for they were too strong for me. They prevented me in the day of calamity, but Ahia was my stay. He brought me forth also into a large place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. These evil spirits are attacking us and they're too strong for us. You're not going to be able to overcome them yourself. You need Elohim. You need to trust in him. You need to do what's pleasing and well in his sight because that's the only way we're going to be delivered. If salvation is something that's important to you, then you need to listen. You need to understand that you need Elohim in all things, in all thoughts, in all actions. Because he's the only one who can deliver us. Even David understood that the evil spirits were too strong for him. We can't do it ourselves. It's impossible. That's why Elohim said, with men, all things are impossible. But with Elohim, all things are possible. Because he knows that we need him. He knows that we need his strength. He knows that we need his spirit. Because that's the only way we can be delivered. The only way that we can overcome. I'm going to jump over to 2 Samuel 22 and 31. As for Elohim, his way is perfect. The word of Ahiah is tried. He is a buckler to all them that trust in him. And I want to everybody to understand what buckler is, okay? Buckler is H4043. It means a shield. That is the small one of buckler, figuratively a protector. Elohim protects us when we trust in him. Okay, I want to read it again. It says, 2 Samuel 22 and 31, as for Elohim, his way is perfect. We have to understand that Elohim's way is perfect and that his way is the right way. That's our confidence. The word of Ahia is tried. It's tried because it's been done over and over and over. We have the records. We have people that have done it and we see the fruit that comes from it. He is a buckler. He's a buckler to all them that trust in him. It didn't say he's a buckler to everybody. It said he's a shield to all them that trust in him. You have to trust in Elohim for him to protect you. See, we have the notion that Elohim is just supposed to do. And that we don't have to do anything Elohim is just supposed to do because he's Elohim. We have our part to play too. We have our works that we need to do in order for Elohim to trust us. Because it's a two-way street. Trust is a two-way street. If I trust you, I'm gaining your trust. We have to trust each other. If we can't trust each other, 
then the relationship isn't strong. If Allah can't trust you, how can he have confidence in you? If your husband or your wife can't trust you, how can they have confidence in you? If your brother or your sister can't trust you, how can they have confidence in you? It hinders the relationship. And it's the same with Allah Hayyam. Allah Hayyam protects those in whom he trusts. And what does it take for Allah Hayyam to trust us? To walk in his commandments, to bear the fruits of the spirit, to not operate maliciously or evil, but to have good thoughts, a good mind, a sound mind, a good heart, being humble, being able to confess our faults and turn from them. Not trying to hide our sins or hide our faults. Not trying to operate in the shadows. Not trying to speak behind someone's back. Allah has laid the path for us. All we have to do is learn it and walk in it. It's all there for us. We're not missing a thing to be able to walk the path that Allah has given unto us. It's just a choice. It's a choice and effort. You think if you put forth the effort that Allah isn't going to help you and prosper you in your endeavor? By all means, Allah Ayyam is going to help you once he sees that your heart is in the right place. But we have to get our hearts in the right place. I'm going to read 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9 and 10. I'm going to start at 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 8, actually. For we were not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure above strength, insomuch that we despaired even of life. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in Allah which raises the dead. So even Paul, when they were in Asia, Paul understood, we're not trusting in ourselves. We're trusting in Allah. We're not walking in fear because we, we're not trusting in our own strength. We're trusting in the one who created all things. Allah. The one who has all things in his hands. Why are we worried? Why are we fearful? Why are we doubting? There is a simple reason. We're fearful, we're doubting, we're worried because we're not doing right. And we know it in our heart and our conscience bears witness of it. You're scared. You're scared of putting your life in another person's hands of putting your life in Allah Hayyam's hands. So you walk in fear, you walk in doubt, you worry about everything, you can't calm your mind down because the conscience is, is like a hot iron upon you.
We have to let go of ourselves. We can't trust in ourselves. There's no strength in us. We can't even deliver ourselves. Second Corinthians 1 and 9. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves. But an Alahayim was raised as the dead, who delivered us from so great a death and doeth deliver, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. Isn't that an ease of the mind? To not have to worry about things because you know that Allah Hayim has it. That Allah Hayim is going to deliver you as long as you do well. That's our only, our only duty. It's to keep the commandments and bear the fruits of the spirit and believe. All of these things, faith and all that is encompassed in the fruits of the spirit. So, and the law. So, Essentially, we only have to keep the commandments and bear the fruits of the Spirit and believe in Yahweh. That's our duty. If we do those things, then Allah, he's going to take care of everything else. We'll have a clear conscience. We won't feel guilty or we won't feel worthless. Because those are all the things that the evil spirits plays against us when we do wrong and when we know we're doing wrong. Kyle, I'm ready for you. Okay. In the simplicity of the choices we have, it says in Sirach 15, verse 14 to 17, he himself made man from the beginning and left them in the hand of his counsel. If thou wilt to keep the commandments and to perform acceptable faithfulness. So he's given us all the opportunity to choose if we will do the commandments and perform acceptable faithfulness. It goes on to say in verse 16. He has set fire and water before thee. Stretch forth thy hand unto whether thou wilt. Before man is life and death, and whether him liketh shall be given him. So our desire, our preference, and pleasure will be given us in one direction or another. And in making the right choice to go through this process of change is going to take work and is going to come with pain. As we're learning, getting chastened from our father. But there will come help. As Zachma mentioned, Ahaya, when he sees us in this condition, fighting to get it right, he will help us. In Sirach chapter 11, verse 11 to 13 says, There is one that laboreth and taketh pains and maketh haste. And it's so much the more behind. This is the person that Zacho was talking about that is working hard, but without insight. Persistent without insight. Right. Yes. <laughs> now, this is the other person. Again, there is another that is slow and hath need of help, wanting ability, and full of poverty. Yet the eye of the Lord looketh upon him for good and set him up from his low estate and lifted up his head from misery so that many that saw it marveled at him. Read that again. Yes, Please. yes, sir. Again, there is another that is slow. I mean, it's not up. hasty. Right, that means that he's slow to action, slow to speech. He's not slow hasty in anything, right? Not not hasty in thought. 
right? He's more self-aware. He realizes the condition he's in. Right. So he's paying attention to his ways because he wants to get it right. And it goes on to say, and hath need of help. That's a big part. He understood that he needed help. Keeping that in mind that, hey, I need help. When somebody comes to help me, let me receive it because I need it. I know I do. That's speaking truth in your heart. And not being lifted up in pride. That's humility. It goes on to say wanting ability. Wanting ability. So he wants to do right. He wants to get it right. He wants to be able to do it. And full of poverty. And full of poverty. Meaning that he has nothing. He has nothing right now. He doesn't have the things that he needs to get to where he wants. Yeah. So it yeah. seems impossible. Mm -hmm. It's like, how do I get to where I want to get when I'm down here at the bottom? This is the beginning of the walk. Yeah. Go ahead. Yet the eye of the Lord looked upon him for good and set him up from his low estate. Mm. So Allah Hayyam seen his heart. Seen his true intention. Allah Hayyam weighs the heart. He can see your intention. He can't be deceived. Once he sees the reason that you're doing it and the reason that you want it and the reason that you're striving for it and it's good, he's going to help you. But it's up to us to examine that, to examine, are we doing it for good? Are we doing it for our own intent, our own desires, our own prospering? For an example, remember um, Kasafo, um the magician? Oh, his name slips my mind, but the, it was the guy that buy Peter. the Holy Spirit. Yes. I remember him. It was in the book of Acts. Was it a problem that he desired the Holy Spirit? No. The problem was his heart, his intent. I think Kasa going to go to it so we can read it for you. The Acts chapter 8. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee. Because thou hast thought that the gift of Allah may be purchased with money. Thought, which is one of the definitions for intent. Mm -hmm. Right. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of Allah mm. So Allah weighed his heart. Though desiring the Holy Spirit was a good thing, his intent for wanting it wasn't. He wanted it for power. Right. He, he was coveting after it. He wanted it for power and he wanted the notoriety. Yeah, the glory. Be exalted in the sight of men. All right. we have to examine our intent. We truly do. How can we learn if we don't go through it? How can we remember if we don't feel it? We have to feel things to remember it. This is exactly why Allah instructs us to spare not the rod on our children. 
because through them feeling it, they remember. When they feel something that hurts them, they know not to do it anymore. When they, when they get praise about something, they know that, hey, that's good to do. We have to feel something in order to understand. So a lot of times, Alahayim takes us through things so that we can actually experience it so that we can understand. Not that he's being rough upon you or beating you down. He's not beating you down. He's showing you. He's showing you lessons that are going to stick with you for the rest of your life. And that's love. He's making sure that you understand and that you don't forget. Because us, innately, we have a problem with going through something and then going forward and forgetting what we went through and, and stopping applying what we learned. It goes right out of our mind. We say, okay, I went through that. I learned my lesson. Okay, but some odd days later, you didn't forgot the whole experience. And it's usually because you didn't feel anything. If Elohim made you feel something, you're going to remember. And it's for your good. I know for me, Personally, when Alahayim takes me through something and I get and I feel it, I remember. And that's like being like a child. When a child is corrected and they feel it, they remember. When a child is corrected and they don't feel anything, it goes right out the door. They continue in it because they didn't feel anything. When he tells us to be as little children, little children, they can be corrected and they're not going to sit there and sorrow in the correction. They're going to be corrected. They're going to take it and they're going to walk forward. We have to have minds as little children, not sitting there sorrowing and having a pity party for ourselves because it's not going to do us any good. It only gets place for evil spirits. But saying, you know what, Alahayim, I trust you and I know that you're right and I know that you corrected me because you love me. Let me do it and let me put forth that energy that I was going to do for a pity party and let me put forth that energy to applying it. Let me walk it. It's a constant battle. A true war of the mind. Will, will good overcome? Good thoughts with good works and actions follow through? Or will evil intervene when good comes or evil overtake altogether? Purge your heart, cleanse it, remove the iniquity from within it and choose the light. We have to remember to do good and accept that Allah has placed people in your life to guide you and to teach you. Allah gives us teachers. Allah gives us people that are, are over the flock to make sure that everyone is okay, to make sure that everybody is moving in the right direction. And you have to trust Allah. You have to trust one Allah when he corrects you. And two, you have to touch those to whom he has placed to instruct. I'm going to jump over to um, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 16. But do good and communicate, forget not. 
right? So we want to do good and communicate, and we don't want to forget what we need to communicate. But with such sacrifices, Allah is well pleased. Allah is well pleased when we communicate and don't forget to communicate. Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls. As they that must give account, because even us that have to watch over you guys, we have to give an account for how we done. Did we allow you to do that sin and not and not say anything? Did we allow you to error and gave praise to the error or negated the error and didn't say anything at all? Are we operating in compassion and mercy towards you and long suffering? Are we speaking in a way that's pleasing? Unto Allah, not unto you. Because Allah is our judge. You're not our judge. These are the things that are truly what we have to understand. And us being teachers, we have to understand that as well. We have to understand that we're operating to the standard of Allah, just like other people are supposed to be operating to the standard of Allah, not to the standard of men. And we have to be comfortable in that. And that is our burden to bear as far as being teachers. That we're not given over to trying to please people, but we're always trying to please Allah, as you should be also. For they watch for your souls, that they must give account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief. So we have to always be mindful of doing things in a good spirit. We have to be mindful to do things in a good spirit, in a good heart, with good intentions always. And for the people that we're instructing, you have to trust Allah and you have to trust that Allah has placed us to give you good counsel. If you trust not Allah how can you trust his teachers? For that is unprofitable for you. Pray for us, for we trust we have a good conscience in all things willing to live honestly. That's our job. And we ask for you guys to pray for us that we may continue to do things well and to be according to the path that Allah has laid in front of us. Amen. You got anything, Kasim? No, I thought that was well. All right. This lesson was to, to bring insight and also to set a standard for everybody to examine themselves to. I didn't feel like we needed to go over all the laws and go over the, the fruits of the spirit because we have lessons for that. You can definitely go and check them out on our YouTube and our website, www.hebrewreaders.com. You can check all that out, uh, all of those things. But this was for the focus. This was for the heart, for the mind, for understanding that we can apply it and truly make changes in our lives for the better and not for the worst. We want to see everybody do well. We want to see everybody grow. It makes us, if for us, it makes us feel like we're doing our job correctly when we see people grow, when we see the growth in people, 
when we see people grow in areas that they weren't strong in, that lets us know that we're doing our job. If people are going the opposite direction, there's something that we need to fix. There's something that we need to examine. So we love you all. We pray that you enjoy the day of atonement. We pray that you self-examine and really look and ponder upon these things and be honest with the sincere heart. May Allah keep you all. We love you. Thank you for joining us for Hebrew Readers Church. Bless you. Peace.